controversial court judgment on sexual consent has angered many. This comes after acting High Court Judge Tembega Ngubai Tobi overturned the conviction of a former paramedic who was found guilty of raping his girlfriend. Ngubai Tobi ruled that because of oral sex, she had tacitly agreed to penetrative sex. So to understand the legal and social ramifications of this judgment, we're joined by Zoom now by legal experts Ntabiseng Dubazan. Ntabiseng, always a pleasure speaking to you. A very good evening to you. So this judgment in itself has been met with much controversy. But as you apply your legal mind to it and you analyze it, was it a good judgment or was it a bad judgment in your opinion? Legally speaking, I do believe it was a good judgment. And I'm basing this solely on, on the definitions that are, um, you know, in included in the definition of rape. If you look at what rape is in terms of what consent usually is, de is described as, consent is either tacit or it is explicit, express consent, right? So now, uh, tacit can be interpreted in various ways, in various, uh, in numerous ways as to what it could be. So now, looking at the facts of the case when you read the actual judgment, the complainant doesn't dispute, firstly, that she was at the, at the accused house. She doesn't dispute that there was kissing. She doesn't dispute that there was oral sex. She doesn't dispute there was penetration, right? She says that after the fact, that's when she said that he had broken his promise that she will not have sex, he will not have sex with her until she is ready. Now, the accused is alleging that throughout the whole process, uh, the kissing, the oral sex, and him taking off his clothes, at no point did she raise any issues about, wait, let's stop, let's not continue any further. Mm. And therefore, he took it as consent. So now, when you look at the, the, the term of tacit consent, in terms of the definition of rape and what consent should be construed as, mm. you can, it can be easily said that the, the complainant had given tacit consent for the accused to, well, not no longer the accused, but for the accused to, 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 to proceed with the sexual act, thereby uh, it cannot be said that he acted intentionally to, to, to rape her in the sense that up until a certain point, there had been no stopping. And what she alleges that while he was busy um, yeah. having sex with her, he kept saying, I'm sorry, in his ear and in her ear, and then uh, continuing. And then the facts of the case state that during the course of intercourse, he she would say that it hurts because she alleged that she was a virgin. And then he would stop and then proceed. And then he, she wouldn't stop him and say, no, 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 that's enough. I'm not comfortable or whatever. So yeah. every time she would say it hurts, she, he, he would stop and then proceed thereafter. Now, when you look at the definition of consent in terms of express and tacit, does that know that in the umbrella, I'm talking about the umbrella of the law here, yes. it then will fall within that umbrella that he was given consent to proceed with the sexual conduct. Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a little bit there, Tabi Singh, and uh, humor me if you would. Yes. So, uh, and oftentimes when it comes to cases of this nature, you would hear a rebuttal in the form of, but hold on a second, if someone is made to feel uncomfortable or someone is being co uh, coerced into a sexual act, mm. sometimes the victim may freeze. Uh, where then the freezing part does not necessarily mean I give you consent to have sex with me. It's just that my emotions at that time, my state of mind at that time, my body's response to the act that is being conducted is one where I am frozen, fright or flight type of effort. And in this case, this fight, flight or freeze. So is there any legal basis to utilize that as an argument, as we've seen with many of victims where they are in a situation yes. where they are being um, violated, but they don't do anything. In fact, they keep quiet. And that often mm. would be uh, said that they froze in the act out of either fear or discomfort or not wanting it and not finding the verbal articulation for it. Mm. So we can also fall, it would fall under the umbrella of submission, that one. Remember, there's also things whereby uh, the person would be coaxed, for lack of a better term, to say, come on, let's do it, let's do it. And eventually the victim ends up saying yes. Mm. Therefore, that doesn't fall under the umbrella of consent. It would fall up under the umbrella that, what was I supposed to do? He kept on 
uh, keeping on. And then eventually I, say, I had to say yes because I had no other choice. I froze, for example, or I felt blank and I didn't know what else to do going further. Now, having looked at that, I'll take it a step further. Uh, remember, the body is the body. It's a biological being at the end of the day. There are instances, I'll speak of cases that I have um, uh, dealt with or heard of uh, um, from colleagues, whereby a body, a woman, for example, if she's the one who's getting raped, then she has an orgasm. And then that is used as a defense by the accused that, no, the fact that she orgasmed is a defense. And then it comes to the, to the light that, no, just because I orgasm doesn't mean that I, I gave you consent to proceed. Many, many uh, accused persons have been found guilty of rape, even if the, 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 there has been some kind of orgasm. I'll take yeah. it a step further. There's been a, uh, there's been a case uh, whereby um, a colleague of mine dealt with it. What, what happened in this scenario, there was consent from beginning all the way to, yes, let us proceed with the act indeed. Now, when it came to the bedroom, there was no protection, there was no condoms. And then the, co the complainant, which is the lady, said, I will wait, go get them at the, at the, at the, at the filling station. But the accused didn't end up doing it proceeded with sex in any event, he was convicted of rape because he wasn't given consent to proceed with a sexual act. Mm. On con he was given consent, sorry, to proceed with a sexual act on condition that he brings a condom, but yeah. he didn't. Therefore, consent was taken away. So remember, you can give consent and you can also revoke it whilst within the act in terms yeah. of the law. Well, Tabi Singh, mm. talk to us about what this means now, because the International Commission of Jurists in Africa have slammed this ruling. What are the legal ramifications of such a ruling that we've witnessed? Wow, for us criminal defense attorneys, it's opened up a huge window. So now we can use this, this, this judgment for a huge number of cases. This is the thing about rape when it comes to our criminal courts. There's so many cases whereby accused persons have not done the act and they stay in custody for so long. And then it comes date of trial and then the complaint decides, you know what, it's fine. I'm not going to proceed with the case. And the accused has been in custody for nine months, 12 months before the trial even commences. So now if the trial does commence and things like DNA are not even in question and the act are not in question, and then we now hear the story of what happened. Remember the judge in this case div divided the moral grounds and the legal grounds. Mm. He did not mix the two. Right. And I remember actually in law school, my first year, my uh, my lecturer said, if you want to be a great lawyer or a good lawyer, you need to differentiate between the law and morality. This is what happened in this case. He only dealt with what the law said. He did not dwell on what the, the quarter quo dealt with, which is the morality of the fact that she, you, you took her flower. Um, you, 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 you know, you did not you know, deal with her emotions correctly and all of that. He dealt strictly with the law, which is not a very popular thing to do in such cases. So for us, it's going to open a window whereby can we focus on the facts at hand? Can yeah. we leave what could have or should have, how you feel or what the morality is, that's going to be put out there with us, how I will argue it at least. And let's deal with the facts of the matter. And if they fall within the umbrella of what consent, I mean, sorry, the umbrella of the elements of rape, which is unlawfulness, intention, the act itself, and, 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 con and lack of consent. If those things are existing, then fine, convict my, convict my client. But if none of these things are existing, therefore mm. uh, uh, acquit my client of the charge. This is what this judgment has done right now. Well, okay, Ntabi Singh, let's be real here, right? We always hear yeah. of many young people, that, young and old actually, where they either fall prey to being victimized by potential perpetrators or, you know, or are in a situation where they're with a, a loved one or with a, in a relationship and they find themselves having to navigate between consent and not giving consent. What then does a man or a woman do so that they can protect themselves against being questioned around the issues of consent. Because this also opens up a pool of a conversation around what happens in the bedroom. So does that mean I have to mm. record my acts so that I can prove in a court of law that I did indeed get consent as a woman or as, a, as an individual? Does that mean that I now have to be very explicit and say, I give you consent to continue? And also, if I am quiet, does my silence then get misconstrued automatically as consent? Mm, mm. So 
that one is a very complicated one. I don't even know how to navigate it, legally speaking. But now when we speak of the normal issues of the, of the bedroom, you cannot now have a, a, a typical one-night stand, as it's called, without you protecting yourself as an individual. And this goes both ways, because I think there's another um, misinformation, so to speak, that rape only is the, 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 the perpetrator is the man. There are very many cases where the perpetrator is a woman. So I think we need to make sure as individuals these conversations are had and are not taboo. So the second, the intention when you see me or I see you, that I, the intention is that I want to have um, sexual intercourse with you. It must be expressed and it should be given and you should be sober and understand what it is that you're getting yourself into. Because now we have situations, like I was saying, one night stands, where it's usually coming from a club or whatever mm. the case may be. People are not very sober. And then the next morning we have regrets and say, oh my goodness, what did I do? And then we decide to go open a case of rape. That is not how it flies. I've dealt with too many cases like that, whereby it ends up being thrown out of court and then somebody's life has been ruined as a result. So rather, don't let silence be seen as consent because we can end up seeing it as a submission and you still get convicted of rape in any, in any event. So rather get express consent throughout the whole process as best as you can. If you record it, you might have to deal with issues of having admissions of that recording within the actual courtroom. You know what I mean? Now we have to deal with authenticity of the recording, whether it wasn't fabricated and all of that. Mm. I don't know. Some people even end up having contracts that are ready to be signed, that this is what I agree to do. And therefore, when it goes to court, we can produce that contract. That is what some people have gone so far as doing. But it now complicates what a relationship should be and, 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 and what love, I suppose, should be. But uh, when it comes to the law, I think it's just best that you have clear and express consent from somebody and even if it's, it's similar to the case that we are talking about now if at oral uh, oral sex and everything is good before any sort of penetration either by you as the woman who would, you will control the situation or yeah. the man penetrates you either way let it be expressed that okay we're taking it further are we still good and if the answer is yes then proceed i think i, I think that's the best way we can do it right now without yeah. having to get uh, recordings and stuff involved so then tabi saying if we have to be completely blunt does this ruling then allow for you as defense lawyers to defend your client um you know and say that this individual had foreplay with my client and therefore that mm. automatically means tacitly consent was given. Does it now open up that or set that kind of precedent that foreplay equals to tacit consent? 100% it does do that. Uh, it can definitely be read into the term of tacit consent. This is, this is my opinion, of course. Um, if you read the definition of what tacit means, so tacit is not exactly implied. It can be by actions, it can be by, by way of, of every, the circumstances that were surrounding the, the whole situation itself. If we can look at all those circumstantial evidence and can conclude that by virtue of this act, it can be presumed or assumed that tacit consent was given, that's the route we're going to take as defense attorneys. And then we'll let the court decide on the merits of the case itself, uh, whether or not they agree with us that tacit consent was given. Could this uh, ruling now be appealed further? Of course, it can be. So uh, if the state, of which I'm sure they are not happy with the ruling, they can now take it to the SCA, and the SCA can then decide whether it was a correct decision or not in law, uh, in public policy, uh, interest of justice. If the SCA agrees with, the, with, with uh, this current court ruling, if they are still not satisfied, it can go all the way to the constitutional court, who will then uh, decide everything as the end of the road. And if they confirm it, then it becomes law, uh, which it already technically is. Um, but if they now uh, differ with the court of co, which is basically the high court that we're talking about, then it could change again. So we can wait and see if the state does take this matter further. We're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for your insights. Legal expert and Tabi Singh Dubazana, they're giving us uh, the insights around what exactly constitutes as consent.